Hi, I'm Lauren Reynolds with At Home Nursing Care, and I'm joined by Michelle Gaila from Renew Health, and today we are going to talk about the Hoyer Lift. First of all, Michelle, what is a Hoyer Lift? A Hoyer Lift is a safety assistive device that helps individuals with limited range of motion or have trouble getting out of bed, but yeah, it's an assistive device that'll help with safety. And it basically helps people not lay in bed all day long exactly. when they have a debilitating disease. So mm -hmm. it's important to learn how to use it if you're going to face that situation. Of course, there are lots of different devices, a lot of different patient circumstances. We're just going to give you a general idea of some best tips. So let's get started. All right, before we get started on the demonstration of using the Hoyer Lift, it's really important to understand the equipment. Um, creating a non-stressful environment for your client is really important because a lot of people do get nervous hanging in the sling. So first let's talk about the sling itself. Uh, there's different kinds of slings that we have here. You'll see there's a label on your, the label of the sling, this is a U shape, but the back part of the sling usually will have the label and you'll see a nice little handle piece here. The smoother part of the sling is usually where it goes against the client's skin or itself. Um, so this is the basic sling that you would see. So an important part of the sling is knowing the weight capacity of the sling. You need to check the label to make sure that it's within weight capacity of your client. And they're usually in the back part of the sling. So once you've determined the type of sling that your client needs and understand it's within weight capacity, we also need to take a look at the Hoyer sling, know the parts of the Hoyer itself. So with the Hoyer, we have the swivel bar. With the swivel bar here, you also have the attachments for the sling itself. You have a front and back. So the control valve will allow it to lower moving counterclockwise and then clockwise will help you pump the Hoyer lift to raise up. And for stability, they have a spreader bar. The spreader bar here, it's narrow base right now, but when we have the client in the Hoyer lift, we need to make sure that we have to spread this open to create a good base of support. Uh, the Hoyer lift also has locks on there for additional stability driver handles here on the side, and then the actual pump itself to raise the Hoyer lift. For added safety checks for some tips um, before starting, you just want to double check your slings. Make sure there's no faulty threading on there, or if it's oiled, definitely don't use it. Um, and also for your Hoyer lift itself, make sure all the bolts are in, nothing's loose about it, and that the pump glides up and down smoothly. Because the last thing you want is to be stuck in a position when you're client in the sling. So we just want to prevent any stressful situations as much as possible. First, I want to also talk about the preparation. We want to make sure that we have all of our equipment ready um, before starting. So I have the sling with me. I have the Hoyer lift ready to go facing the wheelchair, I mean the bed. And the, the wheelchair is close by, but not obstructing any way where I am moving the Hoyer lift. Uh, so looking at the bed, as you can see, Kathleen looks nice and relaxed there, but it is not an optimal position where we need to start the transfer. So let's address the bed. For the bed, we should have it at the most flat portion so we can lower the headrest to make this flat. Once she's flat, we also want to create a good working environment so then we would adjust the bed up because the last thing that we want to do is use an assistive device to help us but we also want to think about the staff um, who's helping you know our clients so we don't want to be rounding out our back so we're just going to adjust the bed up here with this bed it's a manual lift we're going to raise it up most our beds also have an electric button just to raise the bed but this one's a manual one after you have a good optimal position of the bed, then you want to make sure that you lock the bed into place. So the wheel locks are usually on one side of the bed, front and back. And as you can see, I have this side rail up and the one down to prepare to use the Hoyer lift on that side of the bed. To start, getting the sling on again, smooth surface against the skin of the client. The top part of the head support is a little bit harder, so it's a little bit tricky getting the sling underneath her, but we want to make sure that she's center of the sling. So first, in this U shape, we want her head up here and then the base of the spine to be at this bottom part of the sling. So first, as she's laying down supine, arms are going to be crossed across the chest. This will kind of lift up the head slightly. It's going to go in. 
Okay, so from here, once I'm in this position, then I'm going to use a rolling method to kind of get the sling better underneath her. So I'm going to have you bend this knee, and then you can turn onto your side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this as low as I can. And she's assisting me by getting this low. And then this part will be on the end. So then I'm just going to pull. Okay. Go ahead and lie back down. This down as low as I can. And then turn the other way, bending this knee, coming over this way. And again, looking for the base to her spine, pulling this down. And then go ahead and come back down. There. So those are the landmarks that you're looking at, the very base of the sling to the base of her spine. When I'm looking at the sling, I'm looking at the evenness on both sides of the sling because I don't want her off kiltered into the sling, so I'm always examining where she is to the sling. So I'm gonna just get this. So the lower part of the sling, you can see there's two leg pieces. You want just to tuck underneath her leg here, approximately about three to four inches above the knee, and it's gonna cross underneath. You don't want any bunching of the sling, otherwise it's gonna be an irritation to the client, especially if she has sensitive skin. So with the sling, there's little hooks here. You just want to make sure whatever you're hooking to, they're adjustable, whether if your client is tall, short, we can use different hooks. So the longer the client's legs are, then you would use the lo most longest piece, the shorter obviously here, but it's all basically on comfort of level of the client. So once we've had the legs underneath, make sure that there is no bunching up of the sling we want to do a cross lock method. So the cross lock method, you would just feed this through and it would just go that way. And that is to prepare her before attaching her to the foyer lift. So it would just cross and lock. Okay, are you comfortable at this point? Nothing's yes. bunching? Okay, so once we're ready with the sling, again, base of spine is to the very bottom of that sling and then to head. There's two parts also here that allows for the sling to either become more reclined. The longer loop will allow her to recline back with a head support and more closer to a 90 degree is a shorter loop. Today we're gonna use a shorter loop to get her closer to 90. Okay, so now we're gonna move the Hoyer lift. You wanna make sure that underneath the bed that there's no cords because we don't want to be tripping over the wheels. So as we get the Hoyer lift underneath the bed, we're gonna turn the swivel bar parallel to her chest and shoulders. With the control valve, we're gonna lower it so that it can reach the attachments. So here, it's at a narrow base, so I'm going to widen it, and then I'm gonna lock the wheel so that we create stability into the Hoyer lift and for the client. Okay, so with this, we're gonna attach, there's a back end to the shoulders, And for the legs, we're gonna attach it to the front part of the swivel bar attachment. Again, always double checking. So when we're ready with the sling, we're gonna add in a little bit of a pump because we wanna create tension and then recheck our straps. So you're gonna turn the valve clockwise to create tension here so that we can raise the Hoyer lift using the pump. And as you're pumping, you wanna make sure that you're supporting the head. And go ahead and cross your arms across your chest. Okay, so as she starts to sit in there, once she's about an inch or two off, I'll just kind of recheck again the straps. They all look good. Are you comfortable? Yes. Okay. So you're gonna to continue to pump it up until we get clearance from her hips and legs. All right. So while she's in here, I'm preparing. I already know where the wheelchair is. So then I'm going to make sure that the wide base of support is still on at its wide base and unlock the wheels. And then I'm going to 
support her lower leg, kind of turn her. We kind of want her closer to facing the Hoyer lift as I slowly pull her out. So here, I'm just gonna turn her towards the Hoyer lift. And that is a safe position for me to move because now she, her center of mass is centered to the base of support on the bottom. I'm just gonna turn the Hoyer lift in position to get ready for her to be in the chair. So once I have her in position, I'm going to lock the chair, keep her still as possible and comfortable. With the wheelchair, I just have the leg rest out of the way and I'm gonna move the wheelchair directly underneath her. This creates a nice safety orbit for her in case anything should happen. So once we have her right above the wheelchair, she's at a nice 90 degree angle. I wanna make sure there's a little handlebar piece here that I'm gonna to use to kind of help guide her hips back. And I kind of use my leg to kind of push up against the front of the knee to ensure that she doesn't scoot forward. So again, the wheels are locked in the wheelchair and also wheels are locked on the Hoyer lift. So the control valve turning it counterclockwise will slowly get her down. So here, arms are crossed over the chest. Again, as I'm pulling her back, knees here, and I'm watching the swivel bar to make sure it doesn't hit her head. And then from here, it goes all the way down. Once it comes down close to about where the, there's slack on the sling, then I can take out the sling safely. Then I'll unlock the Hoyer and wheel it out and bring it back to narrow stance. Move the Hoyer out of the way. Now to get the sling out, out of the wheelchair, okay. Let's do, I uh, like that line, so it's now to get. Okay, now to get the sling out from under her, the best way to do is get the sling from underneath the leg, push it outwards. And again, I'm in front of her to make sure she doesn't, if she has instability in her trunk, I'm there spotting. So from right here, once she's in this position, I'm blocking the knees, I'm gonna slightly ask her to come forward, and then I can just pull out this sling easily from there. And that's how you would safely get your client into the wheelchair from the bed.